Hey everybody, this is First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Brad Penrich. Quick update on the severe weather potential that we're going to have this afternoon. The first thing we're looking at here is the Storm Prediction Center outlook. A uh, slight risk for severe storms in this entire area shaded in this yellow or looks like mustard. It extends all the way down into South Carolina then up into parts of Pennsylvania. That's the slight risk for today. That basically means there's an elevated risk for severe thunderstorms. I actually think there could be an upgrade up here in parts of uh, eastern Virginia up into the DC area, Delmarva, down into eastern North Carolina. The main threat today is going to be wind. You can see the high wind threat, 30 percent chance of some uh, damaging wind gusts in and around these areas in this dark brown. That does include the Charlotte area, Raleigh, up into parts of Virginia. The one area I am watching though is the tornado threat, elevated tornado threat uh, clearly just to our north and east and you can see the areas included uh, in that elevated tornado threat includes Richmond down to just about Greenville. This is a 10% chance. Uh, anytime you got a 10% probability a, of an EF2 to EF5 tornado within uh, 25 miles of any point on the map, that's pretty significant uh, percentage. Once you get in here, this is at 5%, and then this is 2%. 2% is nothing to sneeze at, but typically uh, you're talking about quick spin ups. Basically, I expect the storms to form here, and as they get up closer to Virginia, uh, that's when we'll start to see the possibility of rotation. Quick check of the radar and satellite together. Uh, you can see back to the west, we clearly have our cold front showing up right now, extending from Virginia all the way down into eastern parts of Tennessee and down into Birmingham. This is pushing to the east, so this is going to arrive in the western Carolinas here uh, early to mid-afternoon. Now, the good news for us as far as severe weather potential, look at all the clouds we have across western North Carolina and even a little bit of rain in the mountains. This is going to keep things from getting too out of control from a stability standpoint. But boy, you look into North, uh, eastern North Carolina, it's a completely different story. Look at all the sun that is out here. In fact, we've already got a couple cells popping up. We've got these cloud streaks. Very warm, humid, uh, unstable air building across eastern North Carolina. In fact, when you look at the, what we call the STP or significant tornado parameter, this is a multi-index uh, parameter. Basically it takes several indices and combine them together. And I can clearly see, and I, I totally agree with what it's showing here, is right in here is going to be our highest tornado threat today. You can see already here at 11 a.m. we're beginning to see that peak. A couple other parameters I'm keeping a close eye on. Obviously instability, that thing we call CAPE or thunderstorm fuel. Uh, this is the current thunderstorm fuel. Look how it is surging here in eastern North Carolina. Some of these areas, four to 5,000 Cape. I mean, this is rich air. And Why is the Cape so high? Well, it's pretty easy to see why when you show the dew point temperatures. Let's throw the dew points up there, and I'll actually change the dew point temperatures. Uh, really, really rich, unstable. I mean, these are 70 plus degree dew points. Uh, that's the other thing that's going to help us in western North Carolina. Those storms are going to fire up. There's a 100% chance we'll see storms. The chance of them being severe is a little less west than it is east. The other thing I lo I'm looking at carefully today is the amount of shear there is in the atmosphere. Let's take a look at the shear, uh, the one kilometer storm relative helicity. Not too bad yet, but as you start looking at the um, what we call uh, storm relative helicities, these are really what you want to look for for rotation. And there's a little bit building over the Charlotte area, but it's really cranking up to our east. So what are the models showing? This is basically the current setup. Let's turn all this off and show you some of the model data. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is the HRR, which is the short range models, uh, showing the CAPE. We'll go back uh, to about 11 a.m. We'll go to 12, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. This is again CAPE, and you can clearly see where the front is as we go out into the future that Cape builds in eastern North Carolina. You can see the problems we're going to have from D.C. to Richmond to Greenville. Boy, late this afternoon, all bets are off for possible rotating thunderstorms. Let's show you future radar. Um, we'll show you what the future radar looks like. This is uh, basically this morning. We'll go towards noon, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Um, notice the squall line for me, but here's what you need to worry about in eastern North Carolina and Virginia individual discrete cells forming. These are the ones that could rotate. These are the possible supercells uh, that we'll be watching for later this afternoon. Let's go out. This is 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. Squall line really coming together. There could be some Boeing segments. and This is what you got to watch out for here in the Charlotte area is this line 
um, becoming what we call a QLCS. And notice that it's squiggly here. Uh, that means we could get some little spin-ups, not strong tornadoes, but brief little spin-ups in some of these notches along the lines. And that's something we'll watch for here. I think there's a probably 80% chance we'll be under some kind of watch, maybe even a tornado watch this afternoon as things unfold. But by far the biggest threat is going to be in eastern North Carolina up into Virginia. You can see even after the supercell threat diminishes, just a nasty line of storms moving through those areas. So again, here's your current conditions. couple things to note. There's the front. You can clearly see where it is right there. I also see a little squiggle in the uh, here. That's probably a little uh, M MCV or mesoscale uh, vo convective vortice uh, that spun up by some big storms last night. That's rotating up this way. That may help enhance uh, some of the storms this afternoon. Um, but the big story is going to be Charlotte, Mountains, Piedmont, Foothills between 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. This thing's going to be moving right over us. Eastern North Carolina, it's going to be a little later this evening, but because of that, a lot of instability is going to build and we could have a pretty, uh, pretty widespread severe weather outbreak, possibly even a tornado outbreak in eastern North Carolina and even parts of Virginia and Maryland. One of the things you notice on this loop, um, the low is way up here near Chicago. It's becoming negatively tilted. And what I mean by that, you may have seen me tweet that a couple times or talk about that on Facebook. When the low is back here, what happens is it starts kind of hanging back a little bit, becoming negatively tilted. Typically, a trough is going to be like this. But what happens in this case, the trough starts to, to get tilted back towards the west, and the trough starts orienting itself like this. And what happens is you get divergence here, and that lifts a lot of air in these sections. It also helps increase low-level shear because the winds come out of the south, and then they start backing this direction, and then you get winds coming in from this direction, which creates counterclockwise spin in the atmosphere and essentially something we call helicity or shear increases dramatically. So you can see the setup. It's there. Uh, please stay tuned to the weather this afternoon. The only good news we have for western North Carolina, the Charlotte area, points west of I-77. This is going to be a pretty quick hitter. Um, showers and storms hitting between 2 and 6, and then by sunset things calm down. Eastern North Carolina, our friends out there into the Virginias, up into parts of the Delmarva, up in this area, pretty much up I-95. Please be on guard. These could be significant tornadoes that develop this afternoon. This is more of an early May setup as opposed to early June. Um, this is really cold air back here for this time of the year. So please be on guard. I'll keep you up to date on Facebook, Twitter, WCNC.com. And remember, I'll be on the air at 4, 5, 6, and 11 on News Channel 36. And if you and your friends are not weather aware, make sure they are. If you have friends on Facebook, if you have friends on Twitter who don't really pay attention to the news or weather, please shoot them a message. Say, hey, Follow WX Brad on Twitter. I will tweet out the watches and warnings as soon as they are issued. And you can always go to our website, WCNC.com, and track the storms on live first warrant Doppler radar. Have a great morning and hope, well, hope everything moves out of here quickly. But, of course, I'll have you covered. I'll be looking out for you for the rest of the afternoon.